Hi guys, it is a gray, gloomy, yuck day here in the end times. Coming at you from the infamous Newtown, Connecticut here on uh, this gloomy Friday morning, August 23rd, 2019, I believe. And I need to uh, get ready for my interview with R.E. from the Doomstead Diner. I'm looking forward to, if you're not familiar with the website, the Doomstead Diner, you need to be. But uh, before I <clears throat> have my chat with R.E. <clears throat> for, uh, for that interesting conversation, I'm going to do what I do pretty much now every Friday on... Uh, on Humpty Dumpty Tribe, and that's to bring you my ecological meltdown roundup from the Washington Post and the Center for Biological Diversity. Now, the Manga Bay Roundup rant <coughs> you can find <coughs> over there at Collapse Chronicles. Uh, I will be posting the Manga Bay Roundup rant over there, and we're going to. Uh, they <clears throat> over here on this side of the dial, on the wacky side of the dial, here in the Doomosphere. We're going to see what those old eco-Nazis, those eco-fascists, I think is the word, that Washington Post. We learn that it, 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 anybody, apparently, <clears throat> according to the Washington Post, if you believe that overpopulation is a driver of environmental catastrophe on this planet, you are a prime candidate <clears throat> for getting an assault rifle and killing people in mass shootings. Now, for some reason, that article, that absurd piece of unadulterated fucking horse shit that I, I've already had a full rant on, did not show up in the environmental uh, <clears throat> roundup for this week. Not quite sure why that uh, horse shit didn't make it, but uh, you, can, you will not be surprised to find what the number one story, they actually have two stories uh, in the roundup today about Jair Bozonaro setting fire to the Amazon rainforest. That the man is completely out of control. Uh, I noticed David Wallace Wells uh, and George Monbiot have kind of joined me in calling Bozonaro the single most dangerous individual human on planet Earth bar none. Uh, so, we're gonna, I'm just going to touch on these two stories from the Washington Post as the fires in the Amazon are finally being paid attention to by the mainstream media. <clears throat> the Amazon is burning while Bozo Naro says his critics are setting the fires to make him look bad. The areas in the Amazon raised by fire has more than doubled in two years, and scientists warn that the world's largest rainforest is approaching a tipping point which is exactly, I don't, I don't think the Amazon rainforest is approaching. Uh, the Amazon rainforest is, is there. It's, uh, it is tipping. The Amazon rainforest is fucked. It's approached the fucked point. It's not tipping. It's fucked. Anyway, we have a second associated story in case you're not aware of this, Amazon fires could accelerate global warming and cause lasting harm to a cradle of biodiversity. 
Amazon wildfires have spiked, sparking fears of land grabs for agriculture and the release of greenhouse gases that will accelerate global warming. And I don't know if I'm going to come back on uh, Sunday to read the latest article from David Wallace Wells in New York Magazine. Uh, my guess is that some of my fellow Doomers here in the Doomosphere will probably read that article if they haven't already. So if it actually makes it till Sunday without being read by one of my colleagues in the Doomosphere, I will bring David Wallace Wells' uh, opinion of Bozo Naro on Sunday, but we're going to go from the shithole country of Brazil to uh, the frying, is it the frying pan or the fire state of Alaska, where we find in Alaska a summer of extreme weather continues. Meaning, as I'm having this rant, this summer, Alaska has faced extreme heat, irregular rains, and wildfires. But don't worry, Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders is here to save the planet. Uh, hallelujah. You know, just when you thought it was hopeless, Bernie Sanders has come to save us as Bernie Sanders announces a $16.3 trillion Green New Deal. Okay, we're going to spend $16 trillion in the Green New Deal to save planet Earth from Alaska to the Amazon rainforest. Thank you, Bernie, for your hard work. Uh, now, I'm already getting confused. Uh, I guess the, the lead crisis has moved from Flint, Michigan to Newark, New Jersey, where experts say it is hard to know the damage already done to kids in Newark from and, and, and guys anyone who thinks the lead crisis uh, is limited to uh, <clears throat> to uh, Flint Michigan and Newark New Jersey I remember when I was a, a reporter back in the 1980s writing an article for the Utney reader 30 years ago talking about uh, the looming lead crisis as the, all of these pipes and whatnot and I'm sure right here in the house I'm sitting in is true and they in the 1980s I was writing about making this very prediction where all these people I was interviewing were making this very prediction that is all of these lead water pipes and you can also do the same rant for asbestos uh, this is nationwide this is planet wide the lead crisis but we're gonna go from the shithole state of New Jersey to the shithole country of Greenland uh, <clears throat> the U.S. is already transforming Greenland and it is imperiling Americans here at home. The U.S. does not own Greenland yet, anyway, you know, making a, uh, a little, uh, having some fun with <clears throat> Donald Trump trying to buy Greenland. The U.S. does not own Greenland yet anyway, but it already holds the key to our long-term fate. Yes. Okay, what is going on in Lake Michigan up there in the Great Lakes? 
this week cyanide from a steel plant trickled into Lake Michigan for days before the public was notified. Thousands of fish have died over the past week since a failure at a steel plant caused cyanide and ammonia to leak into a river that feeds Lake Michigan. Okay. You know, I, I, I love these hilarious stories. There was one in Manga Bay uh, talking about uh, the, the Amazon rainforest in 2050. And here's one of these hilarious studies looking towards 2100. This is the Washington Post reporting on what this country and this planet will look like in the year 2100. Huh. where this new study finds that climate change could cost the U.S. up to 10.5% of its GDP by the year 2100. Yes, a new study finds that climate change could have hugely negative economic consequences for nearly all countries unless greenhouse gas emissions are quickly and significantly curtailed. I hate to tell the uh, Washington Post this, at this point it makes no difference whether human emissions of greenhouse gases are quickly and or significantly curtailed because the tipping points are uh, in full tip, the feedback loops are in full loop and by the year 2100 the uh, effect on the US GDP will be the least of the problems for anybody still surviving in the Mad Max uh, hellscape of the year 2100. Let me tell you where America's GDP will place on their list of concerns. Uh, but we're going to wind up here in the Washington Post on the Mexican Riviera. This it would be uh, the Yucatan Peninsula, all those beaches right down there where we see a seaweed invasion here is a bird's eye view of how tons of rancid seaweed have clogged the white sand beaches of the Mexican Riviera this summer, ruining vacations and devastating businesses. As the seaweed invasion but we're going to go now from the Washington Post over there to the Center for Biological Diversity. Wow, you will not believe that the Center for Biological Diversity is suing Donald Trump hmm, for gutting the Endangered Species Act. The fight is on. The Center for Biological Diversity and its allies sued the Trump administration on Wednesday for its unprecedented attacks on the Endangered Species Act. Donald Trump's lethal new rules will have a profound effect on the future of endangered species making it harder to protect their critical habitat and denying protection to animals and plants newly listed as threatened. His new rules will increase hunting, trapping, and killing of animals as they will accelerate logging, drilling, and mining of key habitat for endangered species on our public lands.
So we will do everything in our power to overturn the scorched earth rules, the future of bears, wolves, sea turtles, and hundreds of other species depend on it. And so now they're asking us, now uh, I guess I have to go get a pillow again because there's other folks in the house. Uh, so don't know how loudly I can mobilize for the wild. So the Center for Biological Diversity is asking you to mobilize for the wild. If we are going to defeat President Trump's attack of the on the Endangered Species Act, we need to show massive grassroots support for the creatures it saves. That is where you come in. Join the center's executive director, Kieran Suckling. I love that man's name. Kieran Suckling and our top organizing staff this Tuesday, August 27th, on a national call to learn what is at stake and how we can stop the Trump bulldozer, the Trump bulldozer in its tracks. This is a do or die moment for the Endangered Species Act. Call in to our Mobilize for the Wild meeting and we will plug you into this important campaign. Then they have a link on how to do this. And, um, but don't think that suing Donald Trump is the only lawsuit this week as we have this week's Taking on Trump courtroom roundup. In addition to suing Donald Trump over his vicious assault on the Endangered Species Act itself, this week the center filed several other lawsuits against his administration to defend wildlife, including orcas, corals, and trees. We sued the National Marine Fishery Service for ignoring a legal petition to protect critically endangered southern resident killer whales from ship, ship traffic that interferes with their feeding and the heart of their foraging habitat. Uh, the suit follows news that three more of these starving orcas are presumed dead, leaving their total number at 73 individuals. Okay, we also sued the fishery service for failing to protect 12 coral species around Florida and islands in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, these corals received Endangered Species Act protection in 2014, but not the critical habitat protection they need to recover, which the law requires. Uh, about 30% of the world's corals have already been lost, and scientists say the rest could be gone by the end of the century. And last but not least, we sued Trump's Environmental Protection Agency over its approval of the bee-killing pesticide sulfoxiflor for use on 200 million acres of the U.S. The EPA made this approval despite the fact that its own scientist concluded that the pesticide is, quote, very highly toxic.
two bees. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, here's a story on the Las Vegas bear poppy heading into oblivion. Uh, here, what is going on with the country's smallest deer, the key deer, endangered Florida key deer are delightfully tiny, about as big as a medium-sized dog. And last week we learned that the Trump, that Trump's U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service plans to strip federal protection from these vulnerable animals. We will fight the decision. Of course. Uh, we do have one tiny ray of good news. Uh, as the EPA suddenly flips on cyanide bombs, just a week after it reapproved the use of cyanide bombs for wildlife killing, Trump's EPA withdrew that decision and the agency will study the matter further. More than 99.9% of the people who submitted public comments on the reapproval opposed the lethal traps. There you go, okay. They are now asking us to take action to stop Thule elk from being shot at Point Reyes National Park. Okay, Trump's National Park Service has put out a shocking plan to kill native Thule elk in California's Point Reyes National Seashore the only national park where these rare animals live. The agency plans to shoot up, shoot up to 15 elk every year to appease livestock owners who enjoy subsidized grazing for their cows on this precious public land. Yes. Its plan would enshrine private, for-profit cattle growing as the park's main use, while doing little to rein in the damage from grazing. Do you think so? But that's not all. Trump's plan would also allow conversion of park, this is national park grasslands, to artichoke farms and row crops, and it would let livestock operators bring in sheep, goats, chickens, and pigs to join the cattle already there, a recipe for even more conflict with native wildlife. Fed up? We are too. So, the Center for Biological Diversity is asking you to uh, save the Thule elk from Donald Trump. But uh, as I say, since there's other people in the house trying to sleep, I uh, probably should not do my usual uh, response to that. Anyway, um, let's see, I guess in line with that, we're going to uh, hear how to save our public lands from Donald Trump. <clears throat> Did you know that the United States <clears throat> public, that the U.S. public 
collectively owns 670 million acres of forest, mountains, canyons, rivers, wetlands, and deserts. Our public lands director, Randy Spivak, knows that and a whole lot more, including how we are all being hurt by Donald Trump's aggressive program of throwing open vast tracts of our precious public land to fossil fuel extraction, which is worsening the climate crisis and pushing rare and vanishing species across the country closer to extinction. Randy Spivak has a commentary here. You know, I've been trying to get Kieran Suckling to agree to an interview with Collapse Chronicles. He did agree at one point and then suddenly just stopped answering my emails. I uh, don't know why Kieran Suckling does not want to talk to uh, Collapse Chronicles, but maybe Randy Spivak will uh, be a little easier to find. But as I mentioned, guys, I, speaking of Collapse Chronicles, I uh, have my full Manga Bay Roundup rant over there today. But we're just going to go down uh, the headlines real quick. If you want to find out more about these headlines, you can find them at Manga Bay, which starts over with this indigenous tribe in Colombia being besieged by deforestation and armed conflict. Then they have a couple of stories about this new planet-eating highway in Borneo. Uh, slicing across Borneo, whatever's left of Borneo. Um, then, of course, uh, Manga Bay, and needless to say, its coverage of the Amazon rainforest fires. Yep, then they go from there looking at the wild orchid trade in China is huge, overlooked, and devastating. From China to Japan, Japan builds coal plants abroad that would not be allowed at home. Yes, it does. Then they go uh, back down to the Amazon rainforest looking at the illegal coca, you know, the cocaine growers moving into the Amazon rainforest. They have this absolutely hilarious story out of the shithole country of the Philippines, where Philippine Bill seeks to grant nature the same legal rights as humans. If anybody knows anything about human rights in the Philippines, I think we know how hilarious that one is. Then they go up to the Arctic, and according to Manga Bay, the way they are reading the tea leaves, 2019 is in line for the second lowest Arctic sea ice extent record. Yes, whatever that happens up there this year, this year dramatically showed uh, that the climate crisis has anchored itself firmly in the Arctic and shows no signs of easing over the long haul. Do you think so? You will never believe this story that deforestation and climate crisis could crash Amazon tree diversity, uh, where they have this hilarious knee slapper, according to this model, that approximately one half 
of the Amazon rainforest will be obliterated off the face of the planet by the year 2050. Uh, of course, scientists warn that Bozo Naro's anti-environmental policies could result in a worst-case scenario for the Amazon rainforest. Uh, and of course, they talk about the Amazon tipping over when it's 25% logged. I anyway, I think we understand how the Amazon rainforest is fucked. Uh, then they do a look at the uh, Indian star tortoise being uh, obliterated off the face of the planet. Then I guess uh, they don't mention Germany, but I guess Norway has now joined Germany in uh, freezing support for uh, these uh, Amazon rainforest protection organizations that as long as Bozo Naro is running the show, uh, there's no point in wasting money trying to protect the Amazon rainforest. That, uh, that all pretense is off. There are no more environmental protections in the Amazon rainforest, and more and more uh, of these uh, international donors are, are, are just going to stop the, the pretense as long as that evil motherfucker is running the show. And I agree with him. It is flushing money down the toilet at this point to uh, to send money to any uh, in any sort of save the Amazon rainforest. Uh, it's, it is time to throw in the towel on the Amazon rainforest. The Amazon rainforest is gone. It will not survive, Jair. Bozo Naro. We are looking at, you know, a full-scale frontal assault on the world's most important uh, biodiversity hotspot. Uh, and anyway, we're just going to end right there because. Uh, Bozo Naro, motherfucker. Uh, I'm letting this man get to me. That the Antichrist, the Antichrist has arrived and uh, he is the opening salvo. Uh, as you can expect, more and more and more high ear. Bozo Naros to uh, be showing up on this planet. Uh, Bozo Naro is the face of, uh, of, of, of things to come on this planet as we head deeper and deeper into the end times. He is the face of the end times and there will be a hell of a lot more where he came from as we get more and more fucked. And I gotta wrap up this uh, rant because the little dog needs to pee. I think the rain has stopped. The little dog needs to pee and I got to uh, talk to my old buddy from the Doomstead Diner about how he reads the tea, tea leaves about how fucked we are here in the in late summer 2019. Bye guys.